Carmen Amigón. I'm the programs director for community for the community building department with Community Housing Works. And I've been very fortunate to be working with the Crown Heights neighborhood um, group for many years now. And really our mission is to help um, individuals and neighborhoods move up in the world, however they define it. And as we began our work there, um, some of our staff met with their neighborhood group leaders. And we just asked them, you know, what are some of the things that you need to, you feel that are important to the neighborhood to work, to work on? And what came up for most of the parents is that they had a lot of concerns and issues regarding the transportation of their middle school children. So they wanted to, to find um, some sort of solutions. And so as we began to brainstorm, our philosophy is really to work with the residents. We believe that um, they are not only able to identify their own problems, but also being part of the solution. As all of their concerns started coming up, we asked them if they would be willing to research some of these things, because I, I didn't know, you know, for a fact. So, um, or, you know, some of the parents sort of had a guesstimate of how long the distance was, what were the scary parts that the kids were walking, um, the dangers of crossing the railroad tracks, because the railroad, I mean, the, the um, uh, public transportation was going to start working in that regard. So we began that, that um, aspect of it. Um, with the support of the staff, um, we, took, we took routes there. We started measuring the distance. We started weighing the backpacks that the kids were taking. Most of the kids were walking to school, expecting to get a, a breakfast at school. And so they were on an empty stomach, walking close to three miles. It was about 2.5 miles each way, very steep hills. And some of them, so that they wouldn't go that route, they were actually crossing some very uh, bare fields. And so we took pictures. We started recording the distance. And with the help of um, our staff, Leticia um, Otto, we wound up um, also creating a PowerPoint. And they started really comprehending and being able to eloquently express all of their concerns. Um, soon after, we, you know, we met with the city to see if they would partner with us, and we were telling them that, you know, what we wanted to, to, to our, what our goals were, and that is to make sure that the kids were safely being transported to school, and we wanted them to be successful. Most of these um, kids were very low-income families who were really finding it hard um, to either pay their neighbors $30 a week or maybe putting food on the table. And we scheduled some meetings with the um, superintendent, at that time was Ken Noonan, who was um, very open to hearing what we had to say and agreed to explore the possibilities of um, partnering with us and what the cost would be um, to at least cover the expenses of operating the, the bus. You know what was, um, what was wonderful when we had a presentation actually where the actual residents did a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation that they led on with the school district. And we had the superintendent there, and Yolanda, which is um, Jose Luis's wife, um, brought in her son's backpack, and brought it and put it on top of the, of the table, and asked uh, Mr. Noonan, the superintendent at the time, um, to put that on, or to pick it up. And he just, he did, and he just started laughing. And, and he'll never forget that, because it was, it was just, um, probably 25 pounds, and this is something that the kids had to wear, you know, to, to school every single um, day, back and forth. And for them to go on an empty stomach, it, w it really created a visual at that really impacted, I think, him. And I think we had won them over already. I mean, I think we did a, a good job with the residents of being able to not present a confrontational, but more of a partnership and what they were willing to give. So. It was unique. It was a very. It actually was a very unique um, neighborhood where parents were willing to volunteer. They were willing to contribute, and um, we had an amazing year. We were able to transport over 120 um, kids consistently, safely to school, and we were very fortunate that the next year, actually, uh, funding was was much healthier with the school district that the parents were able to get funding for the transportation. And with the current economy as we all are aware of with the state and um, the impact that it had this last year also uh, with the school district. Actually, you know, we came back to terms and said, you know, do we want to do this again? 
and the parents were willing to do it. And it was very interesting because this last year, um, from their own learnings, they made some modifications, they made some changes. And instead of, um, and the changes actually that they put in place was that they were expecting the parents or the youth to provide two hours of some sort of community enrichment hours. And at first we're going, hmm, I wonder if this is gonna work. How is this gonna work? And they decided that the alternative would be, you don't have to do it, um, but if you don't wanna do it, then we'd like for you to contribute the equivalent of, I think it was $20. So you have that option. So the first month, I think we had more people um, that actually opted out. But um, as the months have gone by, uh, we have had record numbers in neighborhood cleanups and volunteerism within the, the community because everyone's giving two hours or more. And whether it's cleanups, whether it's helping out at the resource center, um, in a variety of ways. And so that was also a big success. And um, parents continue to volunteer. We continue to have the support from you know, the city's um, housing and neighborhood services. And of course, our partner, you know, which is the Oceanside School District. So, but once again, it's it's about believing that the residents can not only identify their own problem, but um, they can be also um, they can also be a solution to it. Maybe not alone, but in this case, it has been with um, a really strong sense of support from a variety of entities, and that has made this program a success. Mi nombre es Rosa Peñaflor y soy madre de cuatro hijos este, en el programa de lo de la transportación. A mí me ha ayudado bastante porque en el tiempo que se realizó eso, mi esposo estaba enfermo y no trabajaba y yo no sé manejar y no trabajo, no trabajaba para cuidarlo. Este, entonces yo tuve que buscar vecinos para pagarles que llevaran a mis hijos a la escuela y era bastante los gastos que teníamos en ese momento. Entonces cuando se empezó a realizar lo de la transportación escolar para pagar uno, a mí me benefició bastante porque lo que yo pagaba de una semana ya lo tenía que pagar en un mes y en esa, en esa situación a mí me ayudó bastante. Este, y además el centro este, es, una, es un centro que nos ayuda bastante, que nos ayuda bastante a, en, pues, en muchas cosas. Yo valoro mucho el trabajo de las personas que trabajan aquí porque este, ahora yo ya soy voluntaria aquí en la escuela, en la escuelita, en el centro y, este, y vengo a ayudar a las cosas de la computadora. Y es bastante trabajo el que hacen ellas y por eso valoro mucho a las personas que trabajan aquí. Y, y yo este, trato de ayudarle lo, en lo que puedo, en lo que puedo en el, en el centro, en el programa. Este, ahora en la transportación del bus hicieron para venir a, a hacer la limpieza comunitaria. Es una vez al mes y, este, y se junta bastante gente después de que termina uno hacer sus dos horas comunitarias, este, nos ofrecen un café, pan, leche y jugo. Y pues, este, a mí me ha servido mucho el centro, a mí y a mis niños, porque después de clases ellos vienen al centro a este, hacer sus tareas, a, a divertirse un rato, a convivir con demás niños. Y ya no andan mucho en la calle, ya se, se, se tratan de, de divertir aquí en el centro.